Welcome back to your latest aviation news recap. There is a brand new order within the aviation industry. An Airbus A330neo was significantly damaged. Play Airlines reports solid results and United Airlines is eyeing further growth into a key airport within Asia. All that is coming now, so make sure you're staying tuned. Beginning right off the bat with a order. Cathay Pacific has confirmed it's ordered an additional 32 Airbus A320neo family aircraft, including the a 3 21 Neo series, a very popular alternative for customers looking to enhance their narrowbody portfolio. The 32 total units are part of an initial order that was placed for the series in 2017, with the commitments becoming essential to Cathay's long-term narrowbody missions. Some of these aircraft will be deployed towards HK Express, which is a key part of the broader Cathay group. HK Express has a fleet of 28 in-service aircraft, which average an age of 6.9 years. Despite increases in production rates, delivery slots for the A320neo family are far harder to attain than one may imagine. With Airbus siding on numerous occasions, deliveries of jets may take up to six years as they continue to work through their backlog. When delivered, the initial plan is for the aircraft to be deployed towards both Chinese mainland destinations alongside other locations within Asia. These will be confirmed later and closer to the arrival of the first unit as part of this batch in for HK Express. Overall, the announced deal continues an ongoing investment in modernizing the fleet at the Cathay Group and doubles total orders for the A320neo family to 64 units. Only 13, though, have been delivered thus far. As per comments from Airbus's chief commercial officer and head of their international division, Operating out of the Cathay Group's base at the heart of Asia, the A320neo family will enable it to expand its services across the region with a most efficient single aisle fleet and a positive passenger comfort differentiation. With a significant reduction in fuel consumption, the aircraft will also bring an immediate contribution to the Cathay Group's sustainability goals. Moving along to United Airlines, who are eyeing a expansion in Tokyo, specifically focusing on Haneda services. An application has already been submitted to the US Department of Transportation, or for short DOT, requesting the approval to offer additional frequencies into the popular Japanese airport. These Tokyo Haneda slots have been made available thanks to Delta essentially vacating them. United Airlines now has a view to pounce on the availability that has presented itself and launch further frequency to the airport. Houston to Haneda is a target route outlined by the airline that it would like to operate thanks to this new slot becoming readily available. Additionally, it'll target a five times weekly, nighttime only slot that is actually currently held by Hawaiian to operate out of two key locations to Haneda, but to utilize this slot to say offer their Guam to Haneda service. United Airlines is actually of the firm belief that Hawaiian has no view of running the flights for which it holds relevant slots, which means that these slots are essentially rendered useless. Essentially, if Hawaiian would consolidate its flying towards daytime slots, United believes it could boost underutilized Haneda slot pairings in the best possible manner. It believes that these slots are frankly not currently being utilized in the best way, as I touched on, and they hope that this will aid them in therefore getting permission to obtain these. Tokyo Haneda is already a hugely important part of the United Network. Being all too familiar with the airport, it feels it really is the best fit for these slots that will be able to benefit customers in the long term. Asia, away from Tokyo Haneda, has been a target region for United that with the acquisition of more aircraft and adjustments to the schedule that we have seen, they hope to continue growing in. What are your thoughts? Do you believe United Airlines certainly has some leverage in terms of expansion towards Tokyo Haneda? and acquiring those slots that they deem as not necessarily all that useful? You can let me know down below in the comments. An Airbus A330neo with Condor was damaged while parked at Frankfurt Airport after a vehicle hit the aircraft. As you can see from images on your screen taken from Twitter, or now known as X, the damage is pretty hefty. The A330-900 is registered as D-ANRB. Yes, it was built in 2020, but it's actually only been very recently delivered to the company. It currently adorns the blue striped livery, part of Condor's major rebrand, which saw them revolutionize how their aircraft were painted. 
This A330 Neo was parked at the gate and thus was not filled with passengers when the incident did occur, thankfully. A massive tear, though, in the aircraft's fuselage can be seen of the Dash 900, following what can only be described as a high-loading vehicle hitting the plane while parked. Following this collision taking place, Condor will now need to assess the damage with key experts on the site to determine what truly is the best course of action moving ahead, but no doubt it is nowhere near fit to operate in its current state. When actually understanding just how many ground vehicles do collide with aircraft, given the rate we see of aircraft to ground movements around the globe, however when it does occur it can certainly have a varying degree of damage on the relative plane. In this case the A330neo has certainly come off worse with a substantial part of the aircraft impacted. Imagery again highlights highlighting the vehicle's position, which is basically inside the aircraft, tearing right through it. No doubt this will be quite the job to repair and we'll have to see how this all takes place. Looking to Iceland and low-cost play has announced a USD 12 million profit turnover for the summer of 2023. For play, reporting such a profit during the summer season is actually a first. It highlights their overall profitability as a company and a business model that they believe is working well for them currently. Play says that during the summer months, their revenue nearly doubled compared to the last year's summer, with a figure of USD 116 million up from the 63 million one year prior, and their punctuality rate was 83.9%. Taking on four new aircraft and also adding 13 destinations this summer, no doubt was hugely pivotal in actually allowing the increase at play, and it represents a steady growth pattern that they're finding themselves in. Now, Play has a fleet comprising of 10 in-service aircraft per serium. This includes 6 A320 family jets and 4 A321 family aircraft. They average an age altogether of 3.6 years, which means they are one of the youngest fleets operational. Play forecasts that it will double its revenue in the third quarter, which is obviously fantastic, and they'll look towards continuing keeping their costs as low as possible while increasing its unit revenue, as they see capacity being boosted right across the network. Their CEO said, as we draw nearer to the end of the peak season, we are proud of Play's performance over the summer months and optimistic for the future. We see solid financial results with revenue in the summer months nearly doubling from last year and the airline delivering a net profit of around 12 million in the same period. That is a turnaround from net loss to net profit of 15 million. That's going to conclude today's aviation news recap. As always, if you have absolutely any thoughts on the topics covered in today's video, you can let me know down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support. Make sure you are staying tuned for the same time tomorrow when another one of these recap videos will indeed go live on the channel. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.